I'm joined by Mansoud Elami. He is the bank's lead economist. Welcome. To that. Well, let's start off with uh, this idea that you've got to be increasing the rate of monetary right. policy tightening. You know, it's obviously not one shoe fits all. Who has really got to do this? Well, I think we have faced now at the current global economic juncture a multi-speed recovery that we see developing countries continuing to grow at a very robust growth rate. And in some countries, we see signs of overheating by rising inflationary pressures. These are the countries that it is advisable to tighten monetary policy to extend possible. But what it's really important that look beyond the current cyclical developments is when we look into over the next 10 or 15 years, the next decade or so, we see a multipolar world economy that we see increasing global growth being driven by emerging market economies. And that is the kind of changes in the global landscape that is important and requires much more attention and concern. Right, so, but I want to get more specifically when you mention the developing world. I mean, we've got so many disparate economies here. Which are the ones which are most likely to have inflation as, as something which is going to be more of a threat to them than others? Well, I think inflation is pressured to a large extent is becoming a global phenomenon, partly because the commodity price increases and partly because of the recovery that we saw from the depths of 2009. But generally, I think countries in Asia and Middle East are under more inflationary pressure than Latin America and others. Okay, let's just talk about the, these six countries here, Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, South Korea and Russia. Now, they're going to be accounting for, according to your report, more than half of global growth. That's By correct. 2025. So you talked also about a multipolar world here yes. as well. Will we have mul multipolarity in terms of currencies? Will, will the U.S. dollar remain the reserve currency? I think that's really the major important issue that we are highlighting in this particular report, that the dynamics and the gr growth is shifting to the developing world, particularly leading emerging market economies. And the six leading emerging market economies that you mentioned would contribute to half of global growth by 2025 compared to one third that they're doing today. Now, when you see such incredible change in the global growth landscape, naturally, currency changes would be the consequence of that in particular. And in that respect, we see that the international currency regime shifting and transiting to what we call a multi-currency system by 2025, that it would be basically centered on three currencies. We're just going to talk about your latest report, which is suggesting over the next three years or so, we are going to see a pullback. Um, a pullback in growth, not for just developed economies, but for the develop developing world as well. What's your rationale? Well, I think the basic rationale was the high growth that we saw in 2010, was partly reflecting the very deep of the uh, recession in 2009. We see some, I see, growth moderating worldwide and even developing countries. But it's stated that developing countries are going to grow at a very healthy rate of about 6.3 percent, which is quite, you know, robust and continues to be quite satisfactory, given the pressure of the inflationary and the constraint that they've been facing. Globally, I think, as I said, really the important issue is that how we are going to manage this current and uh, cyclical fluctuation with so much a headwind facing the world economy as a whole. But I'm looking more towards the next 10 or 15 years to see what type of scenario is unfolding in the world economy that requires much more policy action today. Okay, well, you know, if we look at also these developing countries, we've got consumption on the way up. Let's take a look at China. We've got a, tr a billion Chinese people getting richer. That's going to put all sorts of strains on uh, the world's resources. Well, I think this is part of the overall the alignment of the global growth that to some extent is desirable because China and many other Asian countries have been growing through export expansion so far and certain degree of realignment to sources of growth from external sources to domestic demand should be very much part of the scenario moving forward. And you're right, I think we do see with the rise of middle class in many emerging market economies that consumption would increase and to some extent that would help 
to narrow down very strongly see high global imbalances that we have been seeing over the past couple well, of years. As a result of this, you are putting up your CPI uh, forecast, the inflation forecast you have for China. Uh, but do they need to be doing more again, going back to the, the original point, mm -hmm. in terms of monetary policy action now? Well, in terms of monetary policy action now, I think that China in particular have been following the very prudent policy of tightened monetary policy through a high reserve ratio, and I think that has been quite desirable. Given the fact that we came out from this deep recession that significant amount of fiscal and monetary stimulus were required in the depths of recession 2008-2009. I think again we have to look at that historical perspective. That some of these policy stabilization, normalization, all in response to the various stimulus packages that governments had to follow in 2008 and 2009. When, when you look at what you, you know, you talk about when we look at China, we see CPI going up, and as we mentioned, they try to move their economy away from export dependency, but the fact is it is still export dependent and if we have growth moderation among developed countries, how does that impact and how does it play out for the Chinese economy? I think that again there are the short term issues and the longer term aspect. In the short term, yes, of course with the world economy moderating in 2011, some in 2012, it would be very difficult to grow through the exports. And that again puts more emphasis on coming with more balanced growth scenario, which puts emphasis at the same time on domestic source of growth. This is going to take time. This requires certain structural changes, structural adjustment that would take maybe a few more years' time than we have seen so far. But again, I think it is important to see the issues. We are facing some current fiscal, current cyclical problems, but from a longer term point of view, a significant amount of realignment to the overall growth momentum from external sources in Asia countries to domestic sources would be desirable for the countries themselves and would be desirable for the global economy at large. Uh, very briefly, you know, when we talk about moderating growth in developed countries, how long does it go on for? When do we see these countries actually get back on their feet? Well, I, as I said, I mean, developing countries, is growth is moderating, it still it remains very healthy. I mean, you know, 6.3%. Like developed countries. Oh, developed countries, I think, are a combination of factors. You have obviously, you know, sovereign debt crisis in the European countries, fiscal consolidation in the United States, and this is going to take time. I mean, there's no doubt that the current headwind of both on the fiscal side, particularly, is going to be a difficult situation to get over. Mansoor Delami, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you us. very much for having me. And the World Bank's lead economist there just uh, talking to us about the uh, prospects of growth across the globe.